why a COVID-19 infection hits some people harder than others. Why do some people get off without developing noticeable symptoms at all, or perhaps only very mild symptoms resembling any other respiratory illness, whereas other people are sent to the ICU and face potentially life-threatening complications. As of yet, a number of factors are known to contribute to worse COVID-19 cases. Um, among these are advanced age, so in terms of the death rate, but also the rate of severe infections and complications, you see those rates tick up dramatically once you hit the age of 65 and older, and especially once you get above the age of about 84 is when you see the mortality rate within that demographic really peak. This is in part maybe due to the fact that as you age, you're more likely to have chronic health conditions that contribute and exacerbate the disease itself. And there's also the background that as you age, your immune system becomes less effective in how it fights off pathogens. So a young person, by virtue of having a young immune system, typically fights off new viruses more easily than an elderly person. Um, this is a well-studied area, but not super well understood in that people have been looking at it for a long time, but it seems that there's a lot of factors to contribute to that drop off in immune response over time. Diabetic people tend to have more severe cases of COVID-19. Again, when I say tend to, that's more of an average look at the entire demographic. That's not to say that every single individual person will contract the same severe illness to this disease. People with diabetes are more likely to have a critical case or die from the disease than people without underlying health conditions. It's unclear whether diabetes itself is directly increasing the severity of the infection or if other health conditions that tend to come along with diabetes, whether that be cardiovascular issues, kidney issues, are contributing to that overall reaction. So it's unclear whether having diabetes in isolation specifically is the thing that's contributing to that scenario. In terms of heart conditions, the lungs and heart work in close conjunction with each other. And when stress is placed on one, stress is placed on the other. And there is some thought that cardiovascular tissue could be directly attacked by the virus, which would compromise it and potentially lead to organ damage. And there's also the other side of cytokine storms potentially damaging the heart in that way, or just elevated immune responses in general could damage heart tissue and leave it compromised. So if your heart is already compromised, that would leave you at risk of other complications. Being a smoker, there's been some back and forth on this, but it, generally the statistics point to people who smoke having more severe infections when they do catch COVID-19 meaning they are at heightened risk of perhaps developing pneumonia, suffering organ damage, requiring ventilation, things like that. Some theory behind this may be that smokers actually have an elevated number of ACE2 receptors in both their upper and lower respiratory tracts. So there's these secretory cells, secretory meaning they secrete fluids. Um, these secretory cells in the upper respiratory tract mostly that capture pathogens and debris in mucus. And in the upper respiratory tract, that's helpful because we can easily cough that mucus out that can exit the body. We see in smokers and people exposed to prolonged periods of air pollution, other things like that, we see more of those secretory cells begin to appear in the lungs. And if mucus builds up in the lungs, it's harder to get that mucus out. So you, you might associate that with that deep hacking cough but it's the mucus's job is to catch incoming debris and toxins and pathogens and try to remove them from the body. So these secretory cells happen to have ACE2 receptors on their surfaces. So in that the number increases, the longer you smoke and the more you smoke, it may be that with the increased number of ACE2 receptors that occurs subsequent to that, um, you may be at higher risk of a severe infection in that way, in that the 
virus has more gateways into cells than in someone who does not smoke. But that's still fairly theoretical. There's also just baseline inflammation throughout the body when you smoke, which puts you at risk of various viral infections anyway. And smoking dampens the immune system over time, making it less able to respond to new pathogens. Kind of in the same vein, several early studies have suggested a link between obesity and more severe COVID-19 cases. This is partially due to the other health conditions associated with obesity, so that also raises your risk of many other health conditions. So at this point, I think it would be hard to weed out whether it's purely the increased weight or also all these other risk factors that come along with increased weight. And also, often comes along with increased baseline inflammation in the body, um, which again contributes to these advanced disease states and puts you at higher risk for various health conditions. There also might be unknown genetic factors that factor into why certain people contract um, really intense COVID-19 infections and others do not. This, the genetic differences are being probed now, but they could be something to do with how the body builds the ACE2 receptor, how many there are, and where, which tissues they appear most abundantly in, genes that determine how the immune system responds to new pathogens. So there's a number of genes, including HLA genes, which help to train the immune system to recognize new germs. And these differ between people, so it's potentially, it's, there's a potential that one gene variant is quote unquote better than another at recognizing the virus that causes COVID-19. And there may be fairly unrelated genetic factors that we haven't spotted yet, um, unexpected genetic factors. But again, those studies are underway and began, I believe, in last month mostly. So still early days for those studies, really, as it takes a lot of data analysis. Um, but that is an active area of study, is looking into how genes play a role in all this.